in framing the debate about the changing global economic, social, and political order, I think one of the places where you can find that changing uh, order is in three places. One is China. China represents a significant changing of the global economic, social, and political order. Not only does it confirm uh, the earlier remark by Farid Zakaria of the post-American world, but it actually represents a new footprint of economic and social development that we had not seen in the last two decades. So this session is about looking at how the media has framed uh, this changing global economic and social order, but in particular to seek to understand how the nationals of each of these countries are also looking at events internally within India, within China, within Brazil, although Brazil is not represented, within South Africa, so that we can get a sense of whether the global changing order is being reflected internally, or there are in fact contradictions that are more frightening to talk about. Uh, I would define China, to borrow the term from Susan Shirk, a professor from the United States, as a fragile superpower. I think the most potent symbol of China, the position of China, either the economy as just uh, uh, our uh, uh, moderator just indicated, uh, the second largest economy in the world, and also the media development. Now we have the so-called charm campaign across the world, that China has already expanded its media influence across the world. Uh, but still, we, we see Yao Ming would symbolize this fragile superpower. It's a superpower, but it's still growing, it's still changing, it's still transforming, and it still must face with a lot of internal conflict and then contradictions and also external uh, challenges and, uh, 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 and uh, abuses. Uh, I, I would rather very quickly skip the, the number. Of course, China now rise to the number one media marketplace in the world. Uh, as you can see that uh, now in the United States, people talk about death of newspaper, or some professor predicted death of television. But in China, I can see no death of either of the media, because uh, no matter it's newspaper or magazine or TV or film and internet, all seems to be rising, just like the rise of Africa. But I think the rise of all forms of media is also very transparent in China, that uh, we have the largest uh, users of nearly every types of media in China, um, uh, both in South, North, and West, and East. Uh, we have this very uh, diversified regional development in China. Uh, but recently, uh, many people asked me about uh, whether you can serve Facebook and Twitter in China. My answer is still no, because Facebook and Twitter are still not allowed in China. We have our own version of Facebook and Twitter, like I just mentioned, the microblog, the Weibo would be the alternative for, uh, for uh, Twitter in China. But in, in the future, I think social media as the emerging uh, uh, global media platform, especially for the generation of digital native, uh, I I still think um, um, in, in China we should have this kind of ideological forces to promote the social media as uh, the, the one of the major platform for our international charm campaign. When we are not following the Western reform package, the package of modernization, liberalization, uh, uh, privatization and globalization. If you are not following that package very closely, if you are not bringing in pro-labor policy, pro-industry pro, pro labor policies, which are actually not pro-people, if you if you are doing if you are not doing that, then it is called policy paralysis. And if you are doing the opposite of it, then there is a very good chance that the word like uh, uh, fiscal prudence or good governance will be used by the English media. Fortunately, as I said, that the regional media is not so bad. There is, there is a plurality even within this English media in India. Postmodernist discourses have enabled us to shift away from approaches that see culture as prior, eternal, stable, and closed to approaches that privilege notions of production, process, performance, play, invention, and individual human agency. Thus, it is difficult to talk of Africa and African culture and African identities in terms of pure, authentic, un uh, unadulterated, and fixed entities. Because of history 
Africa and its cultures and peoples have been open to mutual encounters with and influences from outside uh, the world. The idea of cross-border cultural connections and exchanges of various forms and skills is something good for humanity, and it is recognized as such by Africans across broad time spans and geographic spaces. Uh, China is buying up African farms to grow food for Chinese and other communities. China has been in Africa as a developmental partner, but China is buying up chunks of land in Africa. It's all very well. Coming back to South Africa and Africa, we cannot just pay lip service to what is happening out there. We we cannot just observe, we cannot just be taking an academic interest in what is happening. Africa is a rich, rich continent. Uh, some of us are wealthier than others. Should we Africans not invest in our own future? We cannot just bank on historical Africa, we also have to be future Africa. I don't see, I don't think we are doing enough. We have to set the agenda as well. We have to take in our rightful role as players and setting the agenda for a future uh, South Africa.